Tonight on To The Point. It's an assault on public school funding. California teachers frustrated with the governor's proposed budget cuts, calling them illegal. How they say the cuts will impact schools for years to come. A grocery store parking lot becomes a crime scene. Investigators say a homeless man stabbed a good Samaritan. What led up to the violence? Above average temperatures this weekend, how hot we could get. And later on the back roads, we head to a tiny Plumas County town to see California's oldest cowboy poetry show. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on To The Point. I'm Alex Bell. Following Governor Gavin Newsom's May budget revise last week, the California Teachers Association announced their concerns for classrooms for years to come. They believe this budget would cut funding to education. And as ABC 10's Jeannie Nguyen found out, all of this comes as Governor Newsom is in Italy to speak on climate issues. It's an assault on public school funding. That's the reaction from the president of the California Teachers Association following Governor Gavin Newsom's revised state budget. The governor adjusted the state budget last week and the CTA believes it would impact the state's education system. The governor outlined his intentions to implement an unconstitutional maneuver with our guaranteed public education funding. That guaranteed public education funding David Goldberg is referring to is Proposition 98 that was passed by voters in 1988. It was intended to increase state funding for K through 12 schools and community colleges. On Friday, the CTA says the revised budget would negatively impact schools for years to come. This deeming maneuver reduces a Prop 98 guarantee by nearly $12 billion, 12 billion dollars. Last week, Governor Newsom responded to the concern. I don't want to see thousands and thousands of pink slips go out. I don't want to see the disruption in the system, but we respectfully disagree with with, uh, with that position. Meanwhile, the Legislative Analyst Office says the governor's budget actually addresses an estimated $55 billion deficit, larger than the $27.6 billion he discussed last week. The nonpartisan policy advisor says the May revise actually helped close the deficit with adjustments made to education. All of this happening while the governor is in Italy to discuss climate-related issues, a trip that is paid for by the California Protocol Foundation, a nonprofit that gets funding through donations. It is still unclear how much this trip will cost. All right, Jean joins us right now. So we have been talking about the state's um, budget a lot lately, and we think this, this could raise some questions about our tax dollars payers being used you know, to fund a trip like this. Do we know if they are? Well, Alex, a spokesperson for the governor's office tells me that this is not a taxpayer expense. But the California State Protocol Foundation's goal in covering the cost of this trip is to actually lessen the burden on taxpayers. All right, Jeannie, thanks for the update. We of appreciate course. it. All right, California's budget deficit is not only impacting funding, but also forcing the legislature to scale back its agenda this session. Leaders of the legislature's Appropriations Committee say they had to hold 233 of the 668 bills being considered. They included bills that legalize psychedelic therapy, offer reparations to descendants of enslaved people, and require more transparency around who is paying for lawmakers' sponsored travel, among dozens of other things. And the University of California has filed for an unfair labor practice with the state board following the authorization of a UAW 4811 strike. Now, the union announced today that members at UC Santa Cruz would start striking on Monday. It follows a vote in response to what they say were actions against their rights to free speech, protest, and collective action stemming from the ongoing encampments on college campuses. The UC is now asking the state to step in and order the UAW to cease and desist strike activities activity claiming that it's illegal. Meantime, at UC Berkeley's campus, officials say 12 people were arrested overnight. At least 50 police officers assisted the university as they tried to remove protesters from a campus building. And the protesters, like others around the country, are calling for a ceasefire in the Israel-Hamas war and demanding universities to divest from Israeli interests. One day after being placed on leave, Sonoma State President Mike Lee retired as school president. Lee was under fire for reaching a deal with a pro-Palestinian group on campus. After being put on leave, Lee issued an apology saying he realized by finding an agreement with one group, he marginalized other members of the community. And tonight, a man is in the hospital recovering after being stabbed by a homeless man in North Highlands. The Sacramento County Sheriff's Office says the incident unfolded this morning in a parking lot near Elkhorn Boulevard and Watt Avenue. ABC 10's Roxana Leah says more tonight on what led up to all of this. 
It was in this parking lot in front of Grocery Outlet in North Highlands that a man was stabbed by a homeless person Friday morning. The homeless individual uh, took this guy to the ground, actually stabbed him a couple of times in the back and near the face. The Sacramento County Sheriff's Office says it happened around 7 a.m. near Elkhorn Boulevard and Watt Avenue. This is when some of the businesses here were preparing to open for the day, and a store employee was trying to ask a homeless person to leave the area. A verbal altercation kind of ensued. From there, there were two other folks that got involved that weren't store employees. From there, there was an assault that took place. Looks like a fight ensued between one of the individuals that, again, were not employed by the store and this homeless individual. That's when the man was stabbed and taken to the hospital where he is expected to survive. The suspect was arrested and taken to jail. We asked the sheriff's office what deputies are doing to keep people in the area safe. They tell us they have patrols coming here around the clock and their homeless outreach team is out in these areas every day. They are in these encampments every day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They are contacting individuals and the first option is to offer them help. We offer them resources, we offer them housing. The problem is nobody takes it. Sergeant Gandhi says if you're a business owner or an employee, the easiest thing to do is approach a person yourself if you feel comfortable doing so and ask them to leave. But if the situation escalates, then the biggest advice is to call law enforcement. But again, there's, there's us, call us. That's something that you as a business owner have the right to do. You have the right to refuse service to anyone. You have the right to refuse access to people. In North Highlands, Roxana Elias, ABC 10. The Sacramento County Sheriff's Office say they've arrested a repeat sex offender once again. Deputies say this man is accused of trying to have sex with a 12 year old girl. They say he approached her at a bus stop last Thursday, then followed her onto the bus and got off the bus at the same time that she did. When she called 911, he walked away. He was arrested two days later. The man convicted of attempting to kidnap then House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and attacking her husband with a hammer has been sentenced. A judge ordered 44 year old David DePap to spend 30 years in prison. DePap was convicted back in November of attempted kidnapping of a federal officer and assault on the immediate family member of a federal officer. During the trial, he admitted to breaking into the home and planning to hold Nancy Pelosi hostage. Tonight, a person is in jail accused of starting the ranch fire in Butte County. The fire started two days ago and it burned about 10 acres and is now 100% contained. Thankfully, no one was hurt and no buildings were burned and that person is being charged with arson. Coming up onto the point, a housing hearing turns into complete chaos. Why a committee meeting over the audio tapes turned to verbal attacks being thrown. And a wonderful evening tonight, 75 degrees at 7 p.m. If you have plans to head out, you're looking at 68 by 9 p.m. We'll talk more about what to expect for the weekend plans coming up. And later on the back roads, we head to Plumas County to see a place where cowboys and poets meet. You know, the Grange was developed back in the old days to bring people together that were in the agricultural business. And, uh, you know, church and family and, and the Grange was basically what they revolved around. All right, meteorologist Carly Gomez with a look at our beautiful weekend that's ahead, right? Yeah, definitely a gorgeous weekend. Temperatures are really average this time of year. And you know what? Average is not bad, especially when you talk about how much winter activity we had. And now that we're pushing toward the summer months, I think a lot of people want to just calm down before it gets too hot too quick. And now we're looking at that happening now. Average temperatures into the weekend in the low 80s, creating minor heat risk out there, just affecting really in that yellow shade. Those who may be extremely sensitive to heat, you want to avoid being out too long. Make sure you're wearing sunscreen, all of that, and stay hydrated. All right, looking right now in the Big Mountain backyard, our temperatures are right around the low 80s. Today, we were a little warmer, around 83 to 87 degrees out there. 84 right now, though, in Marysville with Tahoe at 72 and sunny. As we take a look into our weekend ahead, we'll be seasonably warm. Just around similar temperatures we'll be feeling in the low to mid 80s. And then gusty evening winds will pick up for Saturday evening. 
evening. Up to 20 to 30 mile per hour wind gusts are possible, and the high Sierra could see some thunderstorm chances. Right now, mostly clear skies overhead. Strong wind gusts expected Friday, but again, as I mentioned, Saturday here it really pushes in, moving in from the delta and then making its way up toward the north and even spreading down toward the San Joaquin Valley. And then into Sunday, another little push coming through as well as over that Sierra crust. That'll be expected as well into Sunday. Now, taking a look at our Thunderstorm chances are very isolated, most of it very south of US 50 over that ridge and over that crest into areas of Nevada. After that, pretty much all said and done. As we look here into our foothills, we'll be right around these upper 70s to low 80s, overnight lows in the mid 50s, 83 in Ione, and then the Bay Area. If you had plans to head there for the weekend, mid 60s expected right around the Bay in San Francisco, 73 in Napa, 78 in Vacaville, and then the 10 day forecast. That'll bring us temps in the mid 80s for most of the week, but 89 degrees expected Tuesday into Memorial Day weekend while trending downward upper 70s and low 80s. Next on to the point why a House committee meeting turned to chaos overnight, causing personal attacks to be thrown amongst Congress members. And plus, your wallet could be getting slimmer. The changes coming to how your visa cards are used. A late night House oversight hearing turned into chaos in the nation's capital. The hearing was supposed to be about Attorney General Merrick Garland, but quickly escalated into something else when one representative criticized the appearance of another. A hearing among House members became personal overnight, with verbal attacks taking priority in the oversight committee for over an hour. Mr. Chairman, this is out of yes. control. The hearing was supposed to be about Attorney General Merrick Garland's refusal to turn over audio tapes of President Biden's interview with the special counsel, with Republicans pushing he be held in contempt of Congress. It veered off course when Republican Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene made comments about Democrat Representative Jasmine Crockett's eyelashes. Do you know what we're here for? You know we're here about. Uh, just a, uh, well, I don't think you know what you're president. here for. Well, you the one talking about. I guess I, I think your fake eyelashes are messing up. No, what ain't doing. nothing. Hold on, hold on. Listen. Order. Democrats then moved to censure Green. That is absolutely unacceptable. How dare you uh, 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 attack the physical spin. appearance meeting of another spin. person? Are your Move feelings hurt? Her words down. Aww. Oh, oh, girl, baby, girl. Oh, really? Don't even. Play, baby girl. Gonna, I don't think we are so. gonna move and we're gonna take your words down. Thank Crockett you. later fired back with her own personal insults as Chairman James Comer struggled to regain order. I'm just curious, just to better understand your ruling, if someone on this committee then starts talking about somebody's bleach blonde, bad built, butch body, that would not be engaging in personalities, correct? A, a what now? Chairman. I make, a, I make a motion to strike those I, words. I I In the end, no apologies were made. And proceedings were delayed about an hour because of the incident. The committee eventually recommended Garland be held in contempt. That now goes to the full House of Representatives. In your price points tonight, your wallet may soon be getting a little bit thinner. Visa has announced major changes to how credit and debit cards will operate in the coming months. Starting this summer, the payment service will allow account holders to utilize both debit and credit accounts with just one card and will expand its tap to pay choices and verification methods for mobile devices. Americans will be able to set criteria on their cards, such as having all purchases below $100 or with a certain merchant applied to the debit card while other purchases go on the credit card. The features will take some time to filter down to the banks, which will then decide when or what to implement for their clients. And despite several pushes from the Biden administration, the numbers of Americans buying or planning to buy an electric vehicle seems to be dropping. According to a new study from J.D. Power, many cite their hesitation to a shortage of affordable cars and adequate charging infrastructure and an ignorance on possible EV tax credits or benefits. It's time for another trip on the back roads and tonight John Bartell takes us to Plumas County for a story behind California's oldest cowboy poetry show. Those roads they call to me. There are dust and rocks and alkali and where I want to be. 
At the center of California's largest alpine valley, where Highway 49 meets the 70. They wind across long sage price flats toward mountains, rims, and draws. There's an old tin roof building, painted white with blue trim. Folks ask me why it matters why I feel compelled to go down dusty old Nevada roads. It sits on a gravel parking lot surrounded by hay fields and horses. But if you have to ask, you'll, you'll never know. The architecture isn't special by any means, but this building <laughs> means a whole lot to the folks in eastern Plumas County. You know, the Grange was developed back in the old days to bring people together that were in the agricultural business. And, uh, you know, church and family and, and the Grange was basically what they revolved around. I want to hear a coyote howling. This is the Sierra Valley Grange Hall, number 466, home to the Vinton Cowboy Poetry Show. We are the oldest cowboy poetry event in California and the second oldest in the United States. Elko has got us by one year. They took that farmer far away, he died by the claw. Rich Moore's been producing the Cowboy Poetry Show at the Grange for over 14 years. To put it simply, Cowboy Poetry is stories about rural living. The Grange Hall is where rural people gather. I, I think it's amazing that people still do this and, and people still gather and want to come and see this sort of thing. Since 1932, farmers and ranchers like Rich have made a commitment to keeping the lights on in this dimly lit building by any way they can. So there, you know, here you can see them building the main um, hall. They do it not just because it's a historic building, but because the Grange is a nationwide institution dating back to the Civil War era. You looked, there were a lot of starvation. People don't think what it was really like after the Civil War. A lot of dormant ranches or farms and the, and the people needed to relearn. Grange historian Laurel Kohlberg says many of America's farmers were killed in the Civil War. And that's why Minnesota farmer Oliver Kelly started the Grange. He wanted to unite the remaining farmers from both the North and the South to educate and empower new farmers. The beauty of Grange is it can give you almost a union. You can come together and you can you can collaborate with other farmers to say, no, we're all just not going to give you our cows until you pay a decent price. Sugar kisses I've missed. The Grange is formed all over America and became a place Sugar where communities could form and stories could be told. You know, back in the old days, after a hard day out in the, uh, on the range and sitting around a campfire, stories were told. Those stories on the range often turned into poems or songs so they could easily be retold. Getting your medicine mixed up just isn't very smart. Seeing your moments brain fart. Some of the poems will make you laugh, while other poems... I need to see every canyon, every coulee, ravine, and draw, but now my time is running out, and I've yet to see them all. Well, other poems... Well, they can make an old cowboy feel. If, when I sit back here behind the soundboard, <clears throat> it gets you. It does. Excuse me. For some, cowboy poetry can help you wrestle through some old feelings. And the Grange, well, it's a safe place to reflect on them. My wife asked me, why do you keep doing this? And I tell her, because I like it, you know, I, I, I want, I think it helps make a change. I don't know. From the Sierra Valley Grange Hall, home to California's first cowboy poetry show, I'm John Bartell. Hope to see you on the back roads. And now it's your turn. If you have something that you think would be a great road trip destination, make sure you let John know all about it. You can text your idea to 916-321-3310. We'll be right back after this short break.
May is Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, and it's time to recognize the people, history, and culture. Stories about Asian Americans often go untold, but just like everyone else, they have made a significant impact on the community and others' lives. So coming up on Monday, on to the point, we are highlighting the story of Esther Fong. She was a busy mom of three and a pillar of the community. Fong became the first Chinese American teacher in the Stockton Unified School District in 1950. She taught students for 33 years, but the journey to becoming an educator was not easy. She graduated from high school, 1946. She, a teacher encouraged her that she could be a teacher and she'd be an excellent teacher. She went ahead, went to college, knowing that she may not get a job. Chinese people were targets of discrimination. They were prohibited from centuries from becoming U.S. citizens, limiting their access to jobs. But Fong defied the odds becoming an educator. And you can learn more about her life and legacy at 630 right here on To The Point coming up on Monday. And it was a sea of red at the Doubletree Hotel in downtown Modesto today as people gathered for the American Heart Association's annual Go Red for Women Luncheon. We were a proud sponsor of today's event. And right there, you just saw our Becca Hobbegger who emceed the event today. And this event helps raise awareness for heart disease and stroke in women. And those who were at the event helped raise $335,000. You can learn more about this event at the website. All right, thank you so much for watching us and for inviting us into your home. We love telling your stories. And we love getting to meet you. If you have something you think we should be looking into, make sure to reach out to me and the team. Have a great night, and we'll see you on Monday. Hey, it's Alex. I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. The To The Point team and I love hearing from you, and I hope that you'll stay in touch. And don't forget, you can always email me and the team at tothepoint at abc10.com, or you can even send us a text message at 916-321-3310.